I never thought you were bad consigliere. I thought Santino was a bad Don. Rest in peace. But was that true? Of course Vito was a great Don, but great players don't always make great scouts. Sonny has a different take on it. Enjoy. Well, you just do what I tell you to do. God damn it, if I had a wartime consigliere of Sicilian, I wouldn't be in a shape. But what if he did have one? In this episode on Bully Whispers, we will be pondering what if Sonny lived and Michael came back. In doing so, we will first address the criticisms of Sonny as a boss, and then the possible team he could have made with Michael. But before getting started, I'm going to take a second to address the parameters of this hypothetical situation. Everything remains the same until Barzini's plan goes into motion, at which point Apollonia still dies, so Michael comes home, but Sonny avoids the attempt on his own life. I say avoids rather than survives, because even if he managed to somehow survive the attack, an experience such as that is bound to change a person and probably make them more cautious, which would make Sonny a completely different character. So in the interest of continuity, Sonny avoids it altogether, remaining the same character that we all know and love, and the general consensus regarding that character we all know and love tends to agree with Vito. Most people say that Sonny's temper, impulsiveness, and stubbornness would prevent him from ever being a good Don, but I think two things need to be put into perspective before evaluating him. The first is that we don't really get to see him for very long at the top. He had a short reign during a very tumultuous period, and we never get to see him mature as a gangster. The second thing to keep in mind is that his predecessor was Vito Corleone, his successor was Michael Corleone, and being placed in between two legendary Dons is bound to magnify Sonny's faults. The first of which that people usually bring up is his temper. What's down this time? And don't lose that famous temper of yours, huh, Sonny? Which we see from him throughout the film, especially in his dealings with Carlo. We see him yell at Carlo for telling Connie to shut up. And shut up, Connie, my son. Hey, hey, don't you ever tell her to shut up. You got that? And after finding out Carlo beat her, Sonny personally goes and beats his ass with a trash can lid when the guy he hired to kick his ass was running late. However, it's the call during the war saying that Connie was beaten that sent Sonny rushing off to his own death in an attempt to avenge his sister. That leads many to say that he was too hot-headed and bent on revenge to ever make a successful boss, but is that necessarily true? By comparison, Vito, an unquestionably great Don, went back to Italy, a country always at war, and killed a powerful boss to avenge his family. Granted, the loss dealt to Vito's family was far greater, but it was also a much riskier move to go to another country where he had no connections to kill a boss than it was to drive to the other side of town to take out an underling. So the issue here isn't Sonny's temper or proclivity for vengeance, rather what separates Vito from Sonny is Vito's patience. Whereas Vito will stalk you from the rooftops and dim the lighting in your hallway to get you at the right time and under the right circumstances, Sonny doesn't have the patience to wait, will act on impulse regardless of witnesses, and it's this impulsiveness that people often cite as his second big weakness. A popular example which is often used is the meeting with Salazzo to discuss entering the heroin trade when Sonny interjects. The Italians will guarantee it. Oh, are you telling me that the Italians guarantee our investment? And receives the now legendary warning. Never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. But it's here that not getting to see Sonny mature as a gangster really comes into play because even the great Michael Corleone didn't understand that earlier on in his criminal career. Qualcuno ci ha detto che tu sei un pezzo del 90. Un big shot. Sono un figlio del pezzo del 90. My name is Michael Corleone. E si chiama Michele Corleone. There are people who pay a lot of money for that information. Now, Michael wasn't being particularly specific in these instances. But the general violation of letting people outside of the family know things they didn't need to know is the same. He just shows up in Italy, letting everyone know of his significance, and it cost Apollonia her life when she died in a car bombment from Michael. You see, Vito was not always the great Don Vito Corleone that he became, and the same is true of Michael, but we never get to see what Sonny would have grown into. It's at this point that many say his stubbornness and tendency for taking things personally would prevent him from ever becoming a good boss, but is that necessarily true? The meeting to determine what to do about Salazzo and McCluskey suggests it might not be. Sonny's reputation in both those regards is seemingly cemented here. Sonny, we ought to hear what they have to say. No, 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 no more. Not this time, Consigliere. No more meetings. <laughs> No more discussions, no more Salazzo tricks. I shot my father's business. Even the shooting of your father was business, not personal, Sonny. 
Well, then business will have to suffer, all right? But if you actually evaluate the meeting, neither of these appears to be true. Despite his stubbornness, Sonny did calm down and appeared to be taking Tom's advice. All right, we'll wait. It was Michael that brought it back up and pushed the idea through. It's important to note this is essentially the same plan for exactly the same reason as Sonny's, but with Michael... It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. Now, the only real difference between Sonny and Michael's proposals was that Michael is more articulate and has a better command of rhetoric. Everything else was the same, yet Michael is known as calculating while Sonny is known as wild. To a certain extent, it can be argued that Sonny got a bad rap based on a short tenure during a tumultuous time, but what if he didn't die and was alive for Michael's return? Would they have made a good team? While Sonny could never be Michael's number two, at this point, Michael could be Sonny's because as a soldier, he understands chain of command, and Sonny is one of the few people that Michael would listen to. The two could have ended up making an excellent team, with Michael's calm, calculating manner balancing out Sonny's brashness, and Sonny's warmth adding a touch of humanity to Michael's cold distance. Michael would have been exactly the type of wartime consigliere that Sonny wanted, but the real question is, could they have worked together for long? While either of their parents were still alive, this wouldn't be an issue, but once they were both gone, there could be a struggle. Both are alpha male leaders, and by that point in time, both would have significant connections and reputations in the street. Now, there is way too much evaluation required for that question to get into this episode, so it will be the subject of another, but I am curious about how you think a struggle between Sonny and Michael would go, so let me know down in the comments section. Ultimately, had he not died, Sonny had the potential to be a good Don, especially with Michael at his side, but I don't think he had the potential to ever be as good as his father or younger brother Michael. Well, thanks for watching this episode here on Bully Whispers. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.